Have you ever played a competitive online video game and thought, Man, people on the internet can be pretty crappy. Well, I've also had that thought. I started thinking about it in the context of the study of communication after having a particularly interesting interaction. Not because it was especially horrible, but because it was especially sweet, as well as strange. Later in the video, I'm going to try to explain with communication principles reasons for craptacular online behaviors, even citing particularly salient studies. Then at the end, there's a twist that you might not expect in my own behavior. But first, the adventure that led me to even start thinking about all this. Yep, yeah, that's me. You're probably wondering- Yeah, we're not doing that. But a quick history of the situation. Drop the two random teammates, a bloodhound and a seer. Bloodhound drops us in the middle of nowhere. Does their white raven quest item, then DCs immediately. Seer sees some enemies, and I type, kill them. Seer refuses. No! And instead becomes friends with this enemy squad. You're my friends now. Who also got dragged into their bloodhound doing the white raven quest. And after throwing hollow sprays for two minutes, now the five of us are traveling together. Ah, look. Supplies inbound, my friend. Adventure time! Come on, grab your friends. We'll go to very distant lands. We'll take the dog and then we'll kill them. We'll never end this adventure. I'm sorry. This is a once in a lifetime thing. I promise never to. What? I'm sorry, but you'll find a new father. If they shoot at you, then you can kill them. What's up? Dude, I don't think you understand that we are in a 2v3 situation. And they have a lifeline, like we do not win that. No, no, I'm not good with Seer. But we're not killing them just yet. Okay? I wanna see before this goes, this is so much fun. I promise next game we'll be killing the whole lobby. <laughs> just maybe not this game. Or we can do like if we get top two, it might end like a, like a punch out. We have to be careful not to die. Horizon, chill out. Just you can kill, just not not these guys. Unless like the other people are friendly too, then you can kill them with the light. Oh, we need to get to me. They're not scared. Oh, never mind, you're full health. What the heck? Replicator incoming. Shoot, sure, shoot, sure. I, I see it. I see it. Enemy Not 
Only what? two more squads. It was that other stupid team. They did. How sweet. Okay, Horizon, we have to win this. Over there. Over there. Let's go, baby. You know what? We're doing great. We're gonna kill him. And thus our adventure came to a close. That game went from a frustrating experience where someone dropped to do their quest, then quit, leaving us shorthanded, into a renewal of my faith in humanity. This person was so adorably positive, I could hardly believe it. This did not feel like a typical online competitive game interaction. Most of my memories of interacting with people using in-game voice chat are of the sickening feeling you get when people are yelling crappy things at you. There is a section of people in all competitive games that are both extremely vocal and extremely vitriolic. Hello there. What? How? What the f is it? What? You see what I'm I don't. Yeah, yeah come to the back. It's the better spot, I think. No, get the f over here right now. Next to us, get the f over here, snipe. Why are you not listening? Fine. What the f you do? 50 damage as a gippy! Take it now. Bro, you're blocking me! Holy f you guys are pissing me off. You gotta shoot them or something, like what are you just sitting there for? What are you are you looting? Like what do I No, I'm not shut the f up, bro. Do you think I'm looting right there? Well, don't be saying before you have any idea what happened. I'm really tired of that. What? How? What the f is it? What? Now, I'm not trying to like go in on Imperial Hal or anything like that, but he is so mean. Yeah, I get that he's super competitive, he's just trying to win, uh, but okay, look. If I ran into Hal in a pub and he said anything approaching these things... Bro, you're blocking me! Holy f you guys are pissing me off. I'd be like, yo, that guy's a dog turd piloting a human mech suit. Hal is a great content creator, he's interesting and intelligent. He's also a highly visible emblem of toxicity in voice chat, and his toxicity will directly influence the Apex community and the development of cultural communication, which we'll get to in a minute. Some games have worse people than others. It used to be in Rainbow Six Siege that I would frequently see teammates kill each other, or me, because one of them didn't get to pick the character they wanted. This dude team killed me, and then I team killed him, and then he team killed me. Now granted, the last time I played Rainbow Six Siege was in 2018. So, I just downloaded the game to see what the community is like in 2021. Yo. Yeah. Bro, shut the f*** up. Holy shit. Yeah. Like, shut the f*** up. The kid getting harassed does not reply. Going quiet now, are we? He stops droning, probably to mute these kids. And... They team kill him. Can't mute somebody team killing you. Here's some more people who hate themselves playing Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, like, I got body on the free nix. Get that get new Bugatti. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah, no problem, my nigga. Shut up, shut up, bro. Shut, shut up, up, bro. You're f***ing black. Go kill yourself. Okay, I will. Okay, I hope you do. Bro. Bro, you guys both sounds like but you guys both sounds like freaking white boys, bro. Shut up on me. Oh, they're liberals in Iowa. Is the Rainbow Six Siege community better in 2021? Nope. Not better. Maybe even worse. It seems like kids growing up participating in these toxic environments feel they can't get attention unless they escalate their toxicity to another level. But this isn't about Rainbow Six Siege. Apex is the game I play. Apex is the game I love. Surely Apex has a better community experience than what I just showed. The answer to that question is... Usually. 
Dude, you just heard I got nothing on me. What are you doing back there, dude? What are you guys doing? You're bad, bro. You're octane. You're just shit in your Yeah, I know you're both bad. You're bad, minority. Probably a dude. Dude, come on. Come on, chill out. You're bad, dude. You're actually bad. I don't care. I don't care if I'm bad. I don't care if I'm bad. It's a video game, bro. <laughs> this is cracking me up. I love it, dude. Please continue, please, please. I love this. But surprisingly, I didn't actually love it. I hated it. I hated it enough that I don't use in-game voice chat anymore. Now, games aren't always like this. Most of the time, no one says anything, but you can still communicate effectively because of the incredible ping system Respawn pioneered. Spotted a subject right here. I heard you. 80% of the games I play, no one says anything, and I don't even think about it. But negative communication events have more influence and weight in our minds than do positive ones. I'm tired of playing with s**t ball. If you're a s**t ball, you quit. We hadn't even made it to the ground yet, and this man is already toxic. <laughs> In this study titled, The Relative Power of Negativity, it's all relative. there is a section of the introduction that explains what I mean by negative communication events have more influence and weight. First, negative messages are powerful for evolutionary reasons, because negativity is often associated with fear or danger, and positivity with security and safety. At a cognitive level, a person automatically pays more attention to unpleasant than to pleasant information. I don't think I got the right picture for pleasant. And secondly, people are hardwired to being positive when talking to each other because of politeness standards. So when somebody is a nasty bag of fishes spitting vicious maliciousness, you take note and your brain automatically files it and perceives it more strongly than positive steps. I would say my personal experiences are about 70% negative whenever someone unleashes that whoosh to talk button. I thought the percentage of negative voice chat events was much higher, but when I was checking back through some recordings, I realized I just thought it was higher because of the negativity effect that we just discussed. I think Apex is actually the least negative uh, competitive game experience that I've had, if, especially if you're comparing it to like Dota 2 or Rip of Six Siege or some of these other games, or Call of Duty. That being said, I still don't think that it's unrealistic for me to say about 70% of my in-game voice chat experiences end with the person either swearing at me, our teammate, or the video game. Kid, where the heck are your parents? <laughs> the negativity effect explains why someone yelling at you in voice chat has so much weight and power in your mind, but why do people do it? Why are 90% of my in-person communication events positive, but 70% of my in-game communication events are dramatically negative? In-person behavior is like this. Online behavior is more like this. That's not an accurate representation, it's more like this. Wrecked little girl, such stupid idiot. Did you so well? Okay, let's talk about some reasons. If I were to say a statement like, people online are rude because they're just hateful, crappy people. 
That is what we call the fundamental attribution error. The fundamental attribution error is when we assume people's crappy behavior is a cause of them internally just being a crappy person. Numpty, yeah, okay, numpty, really, numpty, dude? Numpty. Oh. But in reality, it might be a symptom of an external cause. A couple hypothetical examples. I was asking my brother for help, but he just didn't respond to me. He's insensitive and rude. A couple of hours, you'll be as clear as a bell. What's wrong with them? He's having a migraine. My roommate just parked in my spot. That guy is a real trash heap of a person. And he's trying to steal my parking spot. He just forgot. And he'd move immediately if you asked him to. My coworker's late to work. It's because he's lazy and doesn't care about his job. You are lazy, right? Ah, oh, don't get me started. <laughs> You probably just made the fundamental attribution error again, didn't you? Thinking, what the heck? That guy just rear-ended that motorcyclist. He's careless and a horrible driver. But the real reason was the guy three cars back. Hal is an expert at performing this. Gotta shoot them or something? Like, what are you just sitting there for? The implication is that Snipe sucks. And the loss was because he wasn't shooting and was playing like a dummy. But the real reason for the loss... When somebody makes the fundamental attribution error, it frequently ends in them being especially rude to a person. Which happens to gamers all the time, they be rude because of that fundamental attribution error. Why'd we lose? Because you're stupid. Because you're trash. Because you're garbage. The algorithm has detected a popular song. Prepare for assassination. Plays now he was like two seconds of queen. Ow. Why do gamers so often blame their teammates? Even when someone has just done something completely and utterly stupid. Should be deterred. I got back What are you doing back there? What are you guys doing? That's a very interesting question, teammate. His HUD would have told him exactly what we were doing. <laughs> he ratted and died alone, and then blamed us. <laughs> when you look at these scenarios, it seems like the person is a complete idiot and is divorced from reality. We both lost our gunfights, and the teammate coming over was not going to change that fact. But what they're trying to do is save face. Well, what is face? Then why are we trying to save it? <laughs> Get out of here, face. Get. Well, what. But what is face? The concept of face is someone's desire to be respected and seen as capable and competent. when they run off and die in a stupid way and are directly responsible for the poor circumstance they find themselves in. Ow! They will instinctively try to save face by blaming someone else. This man is walking in a perfectly straight line towards oncoming enemy fire. He dies. How do you think he reacts? Our dumb teammate hasn't even shot him. Now, was his death in any way, shape, or form my fault? No. What an idiot. <laughs> and he probably knows that. But, if they can blame someone else for the lack of results, then they can avoid the cognitive dissonance incurred by thinking they're the peak of esports level gamers yet having just played the game with the finesse of a five-year-old. Now, this is not to say that I don't occasionally, uh, more than occasionally, play the game with the finesse of a five-year-old. What happened? 
I don't want to talk about it. Another reason people are real fart faces online, anonymity. I can say rude and hurtful things because nobody actually knows who I am. I can disassociate my online behavior from my perception of myself. Obviously, it's not a conscious thought, but rather an automatic response due to the lack of direct emotional stimuli like you'd get in person. For example, if you're yelling at someone on the subway, you immediately and viscerally will feel people's judgmental attention on you from their eye contact, their facial expressions, the silence that would ensue. All of those things make you want to follow societal politeness standards. Unless you just really suck foundationally as a person, which there are plenty of those. Yeah, I'm a horrible, rude person when I play video games, but I'm a good guy. I don't do that in real life. In real life. What a fascinating concept. Being an unacceptably turd-like person, as long as there's a computer screen in between you, is okay for many, 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 many... One hour later. Many people. Another reason is because it becomes culturally acceptable that's one of the reasons games vary in toxicity levels. Because people, teenagers especially, will adopt the language and manner of the communities they are embracing. So if enough people on the game they're playing are saying inane things, that insanity gets proliferated. Sometimes this cultural communication can be popular and prolific, but still be the stupidest, most idiotic nonsense you've ever heard. You're just saying that because you're a boomer. Is that what you think? Sus. 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 I told you. If people freak out in the games they play, the teenager will freak out too, because that's what you do in that community. It's not just teenagers. They're just proven to be more susceptible to adopting cultural communication. It took 10 seconds for my 12-year-old nephew to start calling things sus, but my recently turned 30 friend also used the word sus. It just took him a bit longer to be inured. I just had someone tell me I was molding during a game. <laughs> oh no. Oh, molding? How dare you? I'm not molding. <laughs> molding is a combination of the words mad and balding. And if you don't think that's the stupidest thing you've ever heard, it's because it has been adopted by the culture and you just accept it as cultural communication. And this brings us back to Hal. Who has the most power over crafting a culture's communication? That's right, it's the cultural icons. This is Elvis, by the way, it, if you didn't know who. For Apex, Hal is one of those cultural icons and whether he likes it or not, he has power that will influence the community and how players act in this game. What are you just sitting there for? Now, obviously that applies to all the icons of a community. So in this case, like Timmy, Isu, and, uh, you know, that's the ones that I watch. So uh, how Isu and Timmy, there's more, I'm sure, but, uh, that makes them look like they're in a boy band. Apex Legends Unite. Potentially getting a little sidetracked from the point that I was trying to make. Let's look at Timmy's reaction to stressful tournament scenarios. Yes, yes, yes. I got another one, another one. On my knee, on me, on me, on me. On me. You can feel the intensity in his voice, but he's not being toxic. You're good, you're good, you're good. I'm in the bubble, I'm in the bubble. Stay in the bubble. Stay in the bubble. Stay in the bubble. He's coming up, coming up. Now let's look at the most, quotes rage clip that I could even find of Asu. Well, so I am weak. Oh, oh, oh. I'm weak, bro! Wait a second! Timmy and Asu influence the culture as well, and I love the influence that they give. They're chill, they're positive. Do you need Yeah, I give you that. What a nice guy! And just seem like respectable, great, bros 
Their positive influence will impact the community, and I appreciate both their examples of patience and kindness. Guys, guys, I'm so sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Those okay, last dude, few games, I... I completely just trolled both those last few games. I'm so sorry. No, you're good. Right, you're dude. good. <laughs> Sometimes I find myself thinking, because of the negativity effect, that everyone is rude in Apex. But then I'll have moments like with this sweet-spirited individual. We're going on an adventure. It reminds me that not everyone act like petulant children who think increased swear words per second means you're winning at communication. Maybe I should give comms a chance again. If this next game goes okay, maybe I'll try again. Hey, Rando. Thank you. Trade me. Trade me your object. If you don't, if you don't drop 2k like I do, then you have to have Our dumb teammate hasn't even shot it. Recharging my shields. Recharging shields. Okay, I'll heal. This won't hurt. No one has optics. Is there not a 2 by optic in this game? I have. I think the only one in the game. This might be the most frustrating game I've ever had. Optic wise. If you don't drop 2k like I do. So I still don't use in game voice chat. Maybe me being afraid is part of the problem. Maybe I'm World War II Switzerland in this scenario. Just hoping that somebody else will deal with all the horribleness out there. Here is a gentle plea to Apex Legends players. Kindness is more important than how good your teammates are. You know what? We're doing great. We weren't doing great, and we got owned. But that was some of the most fun and satisfying Apex Legends I've ever played. I think most Apex Legends players and most people in general are kind and good but those vocal dog turds disguised as human beings really take a toll on the psyche. Our dumb so I don't use in-game chat as a way to subvert negative stimuli in my life. But if we look at the negativity effect again, it will take a whole bunch of positive interactions to combat the weight of negativity. So maybe instead of running, I should try to put out positivity. Oh, we did it. Oh my gosh. Good game, guys. Good try. I'm sorry, guys. I'm the worst. You got this. Mm, nice we job, man. With that squad. Good try, man. Nice job. Nice job, man. I right there if you want. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Got any shields, by the way? Uh, yeah, I need spare. I appreciate it, really. Yeah, no problems. Oh, I'm so close, dude. Good job, guys. Good job, bro. Good when I put out positivity, I usually got it back. Apex Legends players, man, what a good bunch. Except for all those people that <laughs> totally suck. But for the most part, what a good bunch. When I started to actively try to spread positivity in voice chat, instead of just staying silent, that graph we looked at suddenly started looking like this instead. You know what? We're doing great. Final thought? Just be good to each other. Being kind makes everything about life better. Even playing video games. You could also just press this button right here solves all your problems.